Hello there, welcome everybody. It's Diorama Don here. Uh, before we continue, please subscribe to the channel. Click that like button. You'll be informed when lots of new videos come your way. Um, so a few months ago, I made a Dutch house. The reason being, I'm half Dutch anyway. So uh, this is uh, the kind of building you might see in Amsterdam, especially. A uh, kind of house where Anne Frank hid or was hiding for a, a, a couple of years. Uh, so I made the house. Uh, not that many views, I must confess. Um, so I, I thought I'd resurrect it and make a bit of a diorama of it. So uh, I've just uh, put the house on a on a base. Um, I've oh, <laughs> I've made the uh, cobbled road and the path as I normally do, uh, but I'll, I'll show you again how I go about doing that in the following video. But I I also made this century box and uh, this um, barrier here. So uh, just a a quick. Um, quick view on uh, how I made those. The motorbike and, and the, the, the models are from a, an old Tamiya kit that I just thought was uh, relevant for the story. And the uh, street lighting um, didn't work out as well as I thought, but they're okay. They're fine. So there we are, um, a Dutch street diorama. So it makes it look a little more interesting than just the house alone. So we'll get into this video and I'll show you exactly how I went about making it. So I've got my Dutch house already made. Uh, I made a video a few months ago now on how I made the, uh, this, uh, this house. Uh, if you are interested, um, I think it's just called A Dutch House in my list of uh, videos. So what I need to do is put it onto a base now uh, to make a, a decent diorama in, with, with the house included. Uh, so I've stuck two pieces of three quarter uh, polystyrene together and put a sheet of uh, two millimeter cardboard over the whole lot and then worked out where I want my road to go around the house. Uh, so this will be the pavement this side and this will sit in the corner and this will be the pavement this side. Uh, I put a, a frame, if you like, or border all around, again, two, in, two millimeter cardboard. Uh, so now we're all ready to, uh, to carry on. Uh, this will be a cobbled road as was a lot of roads in Amsterdam and I think probably still are. Uh, so we need a cobbled area here. Um, I'll do that with my grey grout, which is what I normally use for, uh, for cobbled streets. I've done a number of videos now showing you how I go about that. Uh, but first I need a coat of um, white wall filler first. Um, because the grout won't stick very easily straight onto cardboard. Um, it, it doesn't work that well. So I need a base for it to, to sit on. So I'll do that. I'll put a, a, whole, a coat of uh, white wall filler over the whole lot. And uh, then come back and I'll put my cobbled street in. So we've got our undercoat now of uh, wall filler mixed with water, just brushed a very light coat over the top. So it's now got a key for my grey grout to stick to. Uh, just ordinary tile grout from a DIY shop, uh, very inexpensive to buy. Um, so let's uh, see, I've just mixed. Oh. It's going a bit hard already. I may have to add some water to this. So I've got the shape that I want between the two paths. All I've got to do is level it off for the road. 
I might just get away with it, I don't know. Yeah, that's okay. Ooh, just enough. That's it, really. That's going to be, well, I know it's going to be at least two millimeters thick because that's how deep the cardboard is either side. So the thickness, the thickness is uh, going to be okay. That's it. That's all. So I'll wait now about forty-five minutes, maybe an hour. If if I touch it now, it's going to be horribly sticky and stick to my fingers. Uh, in in about an hour's time, it won't be. It will just be like cool to the touch. Uh, then I can. Put my ruler across and uh, a sharp stick, a sharp barbecue stick, and I can mark out my cobbles um, just going in lines this way and then uh, alternate lines the other way, if you know what I mean. Uh, so, okay, that's all that needs to be done. That, that will make a road. You could, I suppose, leave it like this. Um, that, that that would make a perfectly good concrete road uh, when that's true it will dry a lot lighter if you just left it as it was so you could uh, just make a, a road like that but I prefer a cobbled road so I'll wait an hour and uh, see what happens so I've marked out almost all of the cobbles now um, where the radius of this road goes round I marked out uh, the, uh, the the corner, <laughs> the cobbles going around the corner that way, uh, every uh, five, six millimetres, quarter of an inch or so, until I came out to there. Um, it's easier doing it that way if you're going around a corner. Uh, so I've done almost all, I've just got one more line to do. It's just a case of, it's actually very, very dry at the moment. I've only just got it in time, another few minutes, and it would be too hard to do. So I've just got to go around one more time, like that. Are you seeing this? Yes. It's very laborious, very monotonous to mark out each individual cobble, uh, but it's got to be done. So I'll go around this last uh, last length, and and it's so easy as well marking them out to to make them too big, because obviously the bigger they are, the quicker the job will be. But you, you have to imagine one of your 135 scale uh, models uh, models uh, picking picking one of these up uh, to, to lay them down onto the road um, too big and and you know, any bigger than that and uh, it will it will be out of scale really cobbles are man man made not man made the, the, a man has to put them, has to lay them, he has to pick them up and lay them onto the sand. So they have to be reasonably small. Uh, so um, be careful not to make them too big. That's what I'm trying to say. I've lost one there, uh, but that doesn't matter. That'll, that'll be fine. In fact, it, it's a good thing if I do lose uh, one or two. Uh, so I'll carry on uh, marking out. I'll have to be quick because... Uh, the grout's drying quite quickly. And then after a couple more hours, although the, the grout will be very dry, you can still uh, shape each cobble uh, into a, a sort of rounded shape. Uh, so I'll wait a couple more hours and, and do that. And um, we'll see what it looks like then. 
So we've got our cobbled road done. Uh, what I did was to put um, a different coloured grout uh, in between the bricks, sort of brush, brush another coloured grout over the top to fill in the bricks, uh, the cobbles rather, and then uh, take off with the damp sponge. So that's where we're at now. Um, it, it will be a lot darker than that. I shall go over it when it's all dry. I'll give it a, a coat of a, a, a black wash, very thin, thin black paint, just to darken it a bit. So we have a cobbled road. Now we need paths again. Well, we did put paths in, or I did put paths in, uh, but of course the the road that we put in has uh, we've come up level again. So we need to come up again the height of a, a path. So I've what what I cut before I cut again, which will go there. That will be the paths all around the world all around the road there and then marked out um, in, in Holland in the Netherlands um, they they all all seem to be very small square um, pa paving stones uh, pr pretty much um, all over the country they it's a, a standard design of paving uh, so very very small um, which is a problem because you've got to cut them all out so this will sit there so now we've got the height of the pavement uh, but once they've been marked out then you have to cut with a groove so cutting with a, a sharp knife 45 degrees one way turn it round cut it with the other way so you can see where the grooves are between the paving stones it's a very long and laborious job but um, got to be done so that will sit there. I've got this side to do yet. I haven't cut the grooves out for this side. Uh, but when I have, I'll stick them on, um, give them a coat of um, wall filler, the same as I did before here. Uh, and then I can put whatever paint or, or however I want to finish my path. So with that there and the house on the corner there, that'll look uh, pretty neat I think so then we'll put um, a barrier across here with um, a century box and, and that'll do it that'll be it so I'll finish the paths off stick them on and uh, we'll go from there so I put a, a black wash over the whole of the uh, cobbled street just a very thin uh, coat of uh, black paint and then just dabbed off uh, in in places uh, before it dried so it dries patchy like that which is uh, what I want so we've got a, a patchy cobbled street it needs a little bit more doing to it uh, uh, yet but um, for the moment that's that's okay so we've got our road we've got our house uh, and now we've got paths so I, I gouged out the shape of all the uh, paving slabs took a while <laughs> but uh, got there in the end and the curb as well so everything's all in one one piece uh, gave it a coat of white wall filler very thin coat just to cover it so that I can put a, a coat of something or other on top there to make it uh, more path like and that side goes on there and then the house will sit there and look very nice indeed so now we want um, a century box and a barrier going across the road there so for the century box pretty easy really uh, that front and back two sides and then the roof so it it'll, it's it's quite quite obvious really how to uh, how to make make it but the sizes uh, you really need well you, you you need if you're doing any modeling of any kind ever <laughs> you will need 
135 scale model man, a little soldier. Uh, so you can determine, obviously, how big the entrance is by uh, by the size of the the the, uh, the model. Okay, but I'll give you the sizes anyway. I'll have to give you give it to you in uh, inches. If you work in metric, you'll have to convert it. But uh, an inch and a half wide, and then the gap in the middle is one inch. Okay, and then the height to the eave eave of the uh, roof is two and a quarter, two and a quarter inches. Uh, and then you can have whatever angle of eave you like on your roof. I've made it one inch deep so that when he stands inside he's, uh, he's completely inside the uh, century box. Uh, I think that's all you need and, and, and obviously the, the roof size will be determined what angle you have the eave. So uh, quite straightforward. Um, there will be black and white stripes and I'm not uh, clever enough to do to paint those freehand. So I'll on on a very very thin card, I'll um, I'll paint one black and one white, and then cut out the zigzags and stick them on individually, so that there is a an, an absolute fine defined line between the black and the white. If you know what I mean. When I've done it, you'll see what I mean. Um, it's, it's going to be better than doing it freehand. So there's my century box. And then for the barrier, I've used, uh, 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 what do you call it? Barbecue stick. Um, about a uh, quarter of an inch thick. Where's my man? So if you imagine him lifting that, that's about the right diameter. It maybe could be a, a, a bit bigger diameter but uh, f for this purpose it's uh, that's okay so it sort of fits in scale wise and then just two pieces well four pieces of cardboard one two pieces the height that you want the barrier and then two pieces a little bit taller so the barrier will sit inside like that and then just put it on a little base so it will eventually look like that. And uh, the, the, the weight on the end, again, is, is just in case, encased it in two millimeter cardboard. Paint that black and then uh, there'll be uh, red and white stripes, I think, along there. Not quite sure how I'll do that. It'd be a bit difficult to wrap thin card around such a small diameter but um, I'll get over that somehow so okay I'll uh, finish my path stick them on finish my sentry box and barrier and that should be it so uh, I'll be back in a moment with the finished object so I finished the diorama uh, the sentry box you remember just two, uh, two millimeter cardboard um, then I, I had some very, very thin card, uh, kept half of it white and painted half black and then just cut out the shapes, the necessary shapes to, to go black and white, black, white, black, white. Uh, so that looks OK. Better than uh, having to try and paint and get a, a, a dead straight line between the colours. So that's that was OK. Uh, the barrier, uh, I... Hand, I Managed to hand paint a, a red colour, although you can't see it very well, but it's uh, red and white. <laughs> uh, and then just put a little circle in the front there. So again, cardboard with white card on top. Uh, so there we are. Um, I made some street lamps. Maybe I'll uh, cover those in a future video. <laughs> they, they didn't work out that well, <laughs> but uh, with a little bit of working, uh, I think they'll be okay. They're OK for now anyway. And these are just a couple of uh, uh, models I had left over when I had my half track from Tamiya. 
uh, there was a, a motorcyclist and a, a guy leading the way. So I, I just think it owned a few sandbags as well from my uh, First World War diorama. Um, it, it was just um, an idea to, to, to enhance the, the Dutch house, really. Um, it seemed such a shame <laughs> I'd spent all that time making the Dutch house and, and there wasn't many views. So maybe this will uh, change things. I might have even less now. Okay, so there we are. One uh, Dutch diorama. Um, thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to the channel. Please click that like button. Uh, you'll be informed when new videos come along. Lots of new ideas coming up. And, uh, 100 and getting on for 120 videos already now. And I only started in January. Uh, so, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, have a go yourself. Um, if you do, let me know. Uh, and if you do, then uh, I wish you happy modelling.